In this video, we're going to take a look at enthalpy change. A couple things about that before we get started. So every substance undergoing a chemical or physical change, so that would be a change of state, contains a certain amount of thermal energy. So to go to a gas from a solid, solid to liquid, all of that requires energy. And those processes can be exothermic or endothermic. It all depends. The total amount of thermal energy as no, is known as enthalpy. And we'll talk about that with the letter H. And the energy that occurs in a system during a reaction is called the enthalpy change, delta H, and is measured in kilojoules. So sometimes it can be positive and sometimes it can be negative. It all depends on your perspective. So let's uh, like take a look at some molar enthalpy changes. And probably the easiest way to do this is just to look at an example. So let's write an uh, equation to represent the synthesis of one mole of water. So I've gone ahead and uh, given the balanced equation. Uh, so we've got hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas giving us our water. Now, the only thing is that this is asking us to do it per one mole. And right now, this is actually per two moles. So let's go ahead and divide each of these terms down by two. That's supposed to be a two. Divide each of these by two. And when we do that, we end up with that expression. Now, there is a known value for this reaction. This is... Uh, an exothermic process, and for this one, our delta H is negative 285 kilojoules. I'm going to go into explaining why this is negative throughout this video. So uh, this is one way to represent our um, enthalpy change in this particular reaction. Now, if we want to actually put that value into the equation, I told you earlier it's exothermic and it's a product, so it's actually going to appear on the right side of our equation, and it's going to be a positive value. Now, anytime we put a number into these equations, whether it's exothermic or endothermic, it's actually a positive value. But we have to get our, uh, our, our heads wrapped around the fact that when it is on the product side, it has a negative value. And when it's on the reactant side, it ends up being positive. And again, that's all from your perspective. It's from the perspective of the system. Let's talk more about that. Another way to represent this would be using a potential energy diagram. And I'm going to have the reactants right there. Um, there's my drop in energy to the products. So what's actually happened here is, from the perspective of the system, the energy has gone down by this much energy, and that's why it is negative. So when the products of a reaction have a greater enthalpy than the reactants, it should say, uh, delta H will be positive, and this will indicate an endothermic reaction. And the opposite is also true of the reactants and the products. So again, let's delve more into this idea. Here's, a, here's an example of a reaction. It's got a couple of products and a couple of reactants. And when we're looking at the perspective of the uh, system, that would be the red line here. So here are reactants. There's a drop in energy. We end up with our system has a lower amount of energy and there's our products. The opposite is uh, true of the surroundings. The surroundings have actually gained energy. It's an exothermic process. When you, you do an exothermic process, it gives off heat. It feels hot. So from your perspective, which would be in the surroundings, energy is going up. But you put the two together, you have a net energy change of zero. And that's the whole point. Molar enthalpy, let's talk a little about this. Enthalpy changes involve one mole of a substance. And X is gonna stand for the phase change. Now there can be many values for X here. So um, just this picture here is ice melting and it's gaining energy. So ice and water, they're going through a bunch of different phase changes. Here it's a solid, you know, here it's a liquid. And here we've got it turning into a gas. So anytime we talk about a delta H, we can use a different sort of a smaller word there. I've got some examples here on the next slide as well. So here's a whole table. And the first one here is of NaBr dissolving in water. So this is the enthalpy change when something is in solution. The next one here is a combustion reaction. So we've got a little C for combustion. The next one here, we've got uh, methanol going from a liquid to a gas. So it's being vaporized. Here we've got a heat of formation. We're actually now forming the methanol. And we've got a neutralization reaction. And this is the same reaction from two different perspectives. We've got it first from the sulfuric acid and then secondly from the sodium hydroxide. 
Now, one thing I do want to point out about each of these uh, substances in red, notice some of them are in red, is that it is always per one mole. That says mole. So probably the last two are probably the easiest two to take a look at here because uh, the first one is just the regular old equation because there actually is only one mole of sulfuric acid involved. But as we go down to this one and we're looking at it from the perspective of the sodium hydroxide, uh, you'll notice that there was actually a two in front of it. So all the entities in our second equation have been divided down by two so that we're representing one mole of the sodium hydroxide. Now let's go through an example here. We're going to tie our calorimetry from a previous section into this question. So we've got a steel calorimeter. Now ask yourself, does steel heat up, cool down when there's a reaction going on inside of it? Yep. So what that's going to make this question is it's going to make it a complex calorimeter. So we're going to have to consider here the energy from the water and from the device. So from the water itself, we've got this many mils of water, which is 225 grams of water. Uh, we've got a heat capacity of water of 4.184. That's a given value. You can look that one up. And then we've got our two values here for our temperature change. And this reaction's warming up. So we've got a net difference of, I didn't actually calculate it, but I put all the numbers in here. So there's the mass, there's the heat capacity, and then we'll subtract that to find the difference. Looks to be about 27 point something. On the other side here, we've got our steel device. So it's got uh, a mass of 322. The heat capacity of steel is 0.44. And then again, it's the same temperature uh, difference. Put those numbers together. We get approximately 30,000 joules, which is a pretty big number. So we'll divide that by 1,000 to give us 30 kilojoules per mole. Now we can do something with that, a couple of things with that kilojoule per mole. The first thing we're going to need to do, though, is we got to turn it into uh, kilojoules per mole because I guess that last number I said was kil was kilojoules. So we've got we haven't used this 1.02 grams of ethanol yet. And we're going to do that right now. We're going to take that value and we're going to multiply it by one mole, which is approximately 46.07. Divide those together, you get point approximately 0.22. And then what we can do is we can actually take, uh, we can figure out our delta H of combustion because the units are kilojoules per mole. That's what we're going to be after here. So there's our, our kilojoule answer. And here's our mole answer. And the units is kilojoules per mole. And so when you divide that out, you get approximately that many kilojoules per mole. We're going to actually talk a little bit more about this formula in a few slides from now. So if you didn't quite get that step, just bear with me and it'll all come together here. Um, now that we've got that answer, again, I want us to state this in three different ways that, again, we saw earlier. First way is with a regular thermochemical equation. The second way is, again, with the equation, but the delta H off to the side. And then the last way is going to be our potential energy diagram. So taking a look at our equation here, there's our equation. It's an exothermic process, so I'm putting a positive value on the right side. Now, the second step, again, we know it's exothermic, and we've learned that from uh, when we're switching to this perspective now, we're switching to the uh, a negative value for exothermic because this is representing our system. Our system has lost energy and 136.8 kilojoules. And then as we go on to our exothermic part here, we've got our potential energy, there's our reactants, there's our products, and there's our kilojoules. And again, that's kilojoules per one mole. So I just left it as 138 kilojoules because again, this is reflecting, reflective of one mole. So those are your three ways. Now let's talk a little bit more about this molar enthalpy uh, equation that I've used slightly here and there. And this is now gonna be given, so if you have to make a calculation, so there's a little bit of difference when you're doing calorimeter because in calorimeter, you're in the surroundings, exothermic is positive, endothermic is negative. But when we actually get into book questions, book questions are going to be from the perspective of the system, which means exothermic numbers are negative, endothermic numbers are positive. So we can have some, we can end up with some positive and negative values here when we go to do our calculations. So this is our actual equation here. Uh, Q is just our energy term that you can calculate, N is just moles. So Q is going to be measured in kilojoules and can be positive or negative. Depends if it's exothermic or endothermic. You need to understand what the question is giving you. It'll probably give some kind of clue that it's exo or endo. Uh, the N is just going to stand for our moles, and that's going to be always a positive value. 
And then the last over here is in kilojoules per mole. And again, if we can have uh, we can have negative answers because that would represent something that's exothermic. So let's take a look at this. In fact, I want to recalculate an earlier example that, from a different point of view, is a little different. So we know this is combustion. We know that our answer is going to be negative. So as we roll through this, and we did do this calculation earlier, we've got that many grams, we've got that many moles, or one mole weighs that, divide it out, you get 0.22. Now as we actually go this time to do the delta H of combustion, we need to realize that our 30,000 from earlier, and again I'm using numbers from the earlier example, this now will be negative 30,000. Negative 30 kilojoules, not negative 30,000. And then our mole number is positive. So when we actually do our calculation here, we actually do end up with negative 136.8 kilojoules per mole. Again, it's from the perspective of the system. The energy has dropped. Let's try it with one more example here. Determine the enthalpy change if 100 grams of water vaporizes. And we've got a delta H of vaporization of 40.65 kilojoules per mole. Now I guess the question is, is this process endothermic or exothermic? The clue is right here. This is a positive value, which means that this is an endothermic process. It may not seem like it. You may think vaporization means hot. In this case, it's again from the perspective. It's going to be endothermic. So we just want to take our 100 grams and turn that into moles. We get 555 for moles. Then we're going to take our equation here. And again, the units, we've got this in kilojoules per mole. So this is going to represent our heat of vaporization, plus it's labeled. And we just calculated our N. So we are just going to multiply those two things together to give us our Q. So a little equation rearrangement there. Multiply these two values. By the way, you got moles on the top, moles on the bottom. Those moles cancel out. And you are left with an answer for Q, which is that value. And it is a positive value because it's endothermic. So to fully understand this lesson, you need to understand a couple of things. When we're doing a calorimeter, exothermic answers are positive because temperature goes up. Endothermic answers are negative because temperatures go down. But that's from whose perspective? That's from the perspective of us, the humans, the people, the people doing it in the surroundings. When we start to switch around and start to talk about things from system perspective, and that's what these enthalpy questions are, they're from the system's perspective, you get exothermic answers that are negative because the system's lost energy and exothermic answers that are positive.